there, Hikari and here, here with a bit of a tutorial or how-to for the TV Paint users out there. So, for those who are not familiar with TV Paint or new to it, I'll go over the coloring uh, fill bucket tool real quick. Because if you come from something like Flash, then it's a bit different. You can see I'm working on just one layer down here. Uh, and of course, if I choose to make a circle or something like that, and I want to color it, then it will work just the same way as in Flash, um, where you'll, uh, you'll color whatever you have on the layer. But on the other hand, what you'll most uh, mostly end up doing in TV Paint and programs like this that are bitmap based rather than vector based is coloring uh, on a different layer than, than you will have your lines on. So you can see I have my lines right here for a bit of an animation with my character Seal. When it's turning around here, that's cool and all. It works for what it needs to be. Um, so what you need to do for this is to pick your color and you'll need to uh, select the display option instead as a source. Which means that everything that's on any layer uh, that is uh, visible the fill bucket will consider all of that when it has to fill in. But um, what you will also often end up doing is using the gap closer tool, at least if you have lines like mine that are very open. Because if you don't, then uh, then often, often it'll end up like this, where a TV paint colors everything. And we don't want that, at least not for this. Um, so with the uh, the gap closer tool, you'll often as well have to fill in manually all of this, these little bits and pieces that weren't colored properly. And that gets a bit annoying along the way because you have to go in and study, oh, there's a gap and oh, there's a gap. A and it's not optimal at all. But fortunately, there is a trick for that. And that's what I want to show today. So what we'll be using is a technique where we'll be doing it like this, coloring everything, and afterwards we will uh, select the display option. And like that we will be turning the color tool into a, an eraser tool, like this, and doing this instead, so that, uh, that we erase all of the background and instead have a filled-in seal where it's easier to work from from here. Um, but we want to do this with all of the frames. And there's an easier way to go about doing it with all of them. So what you'll need to do is first off find this tool right here. You'll start out, uh, off up here and then you'll just need to scroll down um, and use this tool called duplicate the uh, current layer uh, and clear hits. So with that we'll have a layer just like our line layer with the same amount of heads or keyframes or whatever you want to call them. Um, but it will be completely clear for us to work with. And I'll just be uh, moving it down beneath our line layer because that's where the coloring usually belongs. Uh, and with that we will be coloring the layer. We need to make it colored like this um, and we want this for all of the frames so instead of doing it manually I'll be double tapping right here beneath the uh, heads themselves uh, to in order to select all of the heads and then I'll be pressing enter so with that it duplicates the command that I just undid with the coloring tool and does that for all of the frames now you can see that our hard work with getting the heads uh, in the same places as the uh, as the line layer it's seemingly undone, but we'll be working around that afterwards. First off, we need to do this again: erase all the color outside, and then undo it, and then select all of the heads and press Enter again. And with that we have a sail filled in all the way. Um, 
Now, of course, we want his uh, ears and everything else to be filled in as well. Uh, and for this, it'll be much easier if we actually have the same uh, heads line up as we did before. So, in order to get that, we'll go down here from Images to Exposure, and we'll be selecting Recompute Exposure. And from that, it can actually remake the uh, keyframes as they were before, which uh, pretty much solves our problem. So now we have sail filled in all the way. And uh, after that, we can just go around and do all the small manual things that the computer couldn't, of course, think f uh, figure out for us, like uh, erasing these bits and pieces, if you have something like that. And then, uh, of course, coloring the other parts. But it's just much easier to color when you have your character actually filled in with a base color rather than having uh, to work from a transparent character. And with this, we can actually finish the animation and we've saved quite a lot of time. I hope this was useful to you as well. Uh, and that you can use it here and there. I certainly do, especially with the longer shots that I work with. Um, it's especially useful if your character doesn't have all that many colors in it. And nonetheless, it's useful. So yeah, hopefully you could use that. And uh, thank you for watching and have a fun time animating. Bye. Hello again. Now, wasn't that something? I hope you enjoyed this first tutorial of mine and found something useful. If not for coloring, I'm pretty sure that you'll be able to come up with some other neat ways to use these tools mentioned in the video. TV Paint is a really fun software. Uh, you can do pretty much anything imaginable within the 2D realm with it. The trick is just figuring out how. Be sure to like and share this video to your heart's content and consider subscribing if you haven't already. It's free and that way you'll be able to stay up to date on future tutorials, animation spotlights, as well as the next episode of Tales of Sale and other animated shorts that I've got coming up. And I'm also on Facebook, Tumblr and Twitter for that matter. Wow! Anyhow, I'll leave you with that. If there's anything that you think I know that you would like to know, do voice it in the comments below and maybe I'll be able to make a how-to on it in the future. Until next time, have a great day and take care and ouch!